Hey guys, my name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're a first time viewer, thank you. Welcome. Great to see you. If you're a current subscribe member, thank you so much for continuing to follow my journey. With that, today's video, we're going to talk about the three dating and relationship approaches or strategies that men can take. And those three approaches are either the lover, the provider, or the friend. Now, we're not going to talk a lot about the friend approach because to me, I've done other videos on why it's not good to stay her friend. I've talked about this a bunch of different times, but in general, taking the friend approach or taking that back door and just try to be her friend first is the most toxic. It's going to lead to the most heartbreak for you. And generally, you're never going to be able to move her from the friendship role into the lover role or into the provider role. So the takeaway on here is the two main roles most take, the lover role and the provider role. So the provider role is really just somebody who is sexually involved, with their partner who's already in a relationship with them or wants to be in a relationship with them. They're heading in that direction. And they're also willing, and here's the big takeaway, they're willing to commit to her and they're willing to invest his resources into her. That's basically the provider role. And most men fall into this role. About 70 to 80% of men fall into this role. And then you have the lover role. The lover role is really just somebody who is having sex either with one female or multiple females, and they're not focused on a relationship. They're focused on sex. They're not willing or able to share his resources or invest in her. Those are the takeaways. So that lover role is that role I always say, the Ray, the Pookies, the Chads of the world. Their approach is seeking as much sex as possible, becoming her lover, not her provider. This strategy, I would say, takes up maybe about 15%, probably less, but maybe about 15% of the population can actually pull this role off. And it can be a good role for some people, but more often than not, most men can't pull off this role. They think they can. And the red pill community and all these other forums tell you how to become a player and there's pickup artists, but generally speaking, most men can't pull off this role. And we'll talk a little bit about why um, in a minute, but the lover and provider strategies can both be valid and effective, but it depends again on what your strengths and your weaknesses are, the environment you're in, the other men in your environment, what their strategies are. Also depends on your goals and of course, your favorite type of relationship. Now, if you ask most men, yeah, I would love to be the, the lover and, and bang all these beautiful women. You see it on Instagram. You see it on these YouTube influencers thing. Ideally, yes, because we are hardwired to have as much sex as possible with as little as investment as possible. That sounds great. That Every guy would probably sign up for that. But as we go along, you'll see why it's a much harder role or more harder strategy to play for most men, which is why most men fall into the provider role. Now, before we go any further, my name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you find these videos helpful, if you like the content, please hit like. While you're at it, hit subscribe. You all know what to do. The purpose of this channel is to help men understand that 
The dating strategy has changed, and I'm here to help you guys understand female dynamic, female nature, but really just social dynamics as they relate to one another. Now with that, we're gonna dive first in the lover strategy because most men, if you ask them, this is the strategy that they would love to be in, but ideally those same men are not in the lover strategy. Now the lover strategy, they're only looking for sex. They're trying to get as much sex as possible with providing as little as investment as possible. No financial investment, no emotional investment, no support or commitment. And if it's executed well, if the guy can get away with this, this always leads to very quick, no strings attached sex. Again, the rays, the pookies, the guys who can go into a club or to a bar and generally pick up a lot of different types of women there for sex okay it can happen it does happen women that are watching this say i would never do this that's a lie because more often than not depending on what situation a woman's in in what season of life she's in she may advocate and may be fine with this type of relationship so depending on what the woman's actually looking for this strategy can work however it's very short term and it's always casual sex. It's a very cut and dry type of situation. It's literally asking or getting to the point with women like, do you want to fuck? Okay. The downside to this is in order for this to work, you got to be extremely good looking, but not even so much good looking because looks, looks are kind of subjective to women. But sexuality, being very sexual, being what women say, he's sexy. You have to be her kind of sexy. So if you are her kind of sexy and you are a little bit smooth and you do have a good mouthpiece on it and you are attractive and you do take care of your body, this type of style can benefit you. However, the caveat to this is if you do find this woman attractive and you do actually like her and you go with this approach, you can never go back to the provider approach. Literally back test this yourself. If you go up to a pretty girl and say, hey, I'm Jared, do you want to fuck? And she says no, you can't turn around and come back and say, hey, I'm Jared, I find you very attractive, would you like to go on a date? You've been literally just shot yourself. So you have to commit to this role and you have to take a shit ton of no's from women, but there will be some women that will say yes. Absolutely, there will be some women that say yes. If you're really not good in bed, then the woman's gonna think it's more transactional, more of like a one night stand type thing and write you off. So, you have a lot of things going against you. You gotta be really good looking, you gotta have a great mouthpiece, you gotta take care of yourself. You have to be her type of sexy. And if you want that casual, no strings attached sex where she calls you in the middle of the night or every couple days you guys hook up just for sex, but that's all, you gotta be really good in bed. You have to on some level connect with her chemistry and connect with her sexually. So. It is a valid path for men, but it's a very finite group of men that can fit within this. Okay. Now, and the final downfall for this, guys, is you date below your potential. When you date purely as the lover, you're taking your important assets off the table. You're basically taking your resources, if you have any, you're taking those off the table for her. She's not able to have your resources, nor are you willing to give your resources. And this is a really big thing you have to understand when it comes to dating, because this is what women look for. It's not like she's looking to take your resources, but she's looking to see, do you have resources and are you willing to share them? That is the key to female sexual dating strategy. Not just having sex, it's getting into a relationship and being able 
to have access to his resources. So if those resources are off the table or you don't have any to provide, all you have are your looks, a lot of these higher quality women that may be good mates for you, they're completely taken off the field because of this. So you're going to get a lot of lower quality women. You're going to get a lot of women who are probably emotionally damaged to a degree. Maybe have women that are going through a divorce and you're kind of getting into this dynamic where she's just looking to fuck. You might get a woman who just broke up with her boyfriend and if you have a good enough mouthpiece, you can get sex from her. So you're going to get women that are coming into your life, in my opinion, at a deficit. And I guess it depends on how you look at that. If you're only looking for sex, fine. But generally speaking, your higher quality women aren't going to be interested in this. So your full potential will not be realized taking this strategy. Now, we'll talk about the provider role because it does sound... You hear it in a lot of red pill community. You hear it a lot in these places that it sucks to be the provider. And it depends on what level of a provider you are. So let's just get into this. Most men are providers. Most men want to be providers. The providing man is generally looking for long-term sexual access to a woman. And part of his compensation package to her is he's able and willing to invest emotionally, financially, give her support and give her what she really wants is commitment. This is what being a provider is. The provider role, it is the main default for most men. And, and that's okay. Like I said, 70, probably close to 80% of men's default is that. Now, the drawbacks of being a provider is if you're an average provider, meaning you're a guy who has an average job, you're of average looks, maybe not really taking great care of yourself, you're just average, which is a majority of men, but you watching this video, you are not average. Remember that. You're trying to level yourself up. But the average man... He's going to be screened and qualified much harder by this potential female, but he's also going to get more room for error than the lover approach. Remember, if you go the lover approach, you, you, there are no errors. You literally need to have a great mouthpiece, be very smooth, know how to escalate, know how to lead. It's not an easy role. The provider role, if you're very average and you really just like this girl, she's going to screen you harder. She's going to hold sex out a lot longer than the lover approach, but she's going to allow you more room for error because of the two different approaches. This is mainly due because you're held at a much lower standard than the lover approach. Of course, you're just held lower. You're an average guy. You have average means, and so you're going to get average return. That's basically what it means. Now, don't think this is bad, because within this provider role, you can be a very high-level provider. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Just know, by being that average provider, things are going to move much slower. Access to sex, she might wait, make you wait 30, 60, 90 days, whatever the fuck they do now. You're going to have to invest more in her on the front end, more of your emotional time, more money, more dates, giving her more resources. You have to show her on the front end that you're more committed to her than, say, a different guy. Maybe a guy who's still a provider, but a higher quality provider, certainly a lover. You're going to have to prove to her that you're willing to do more things. And when you do that, being an average provider you in a way qualifying to her. So she's going to think that she's a prize in this dynamic. This is kind of the side, this is kind of that drawback to it because you're always over qualifying to her to try to get sex from her, to get a relationship to her. You're putting her on a pedestal. You're qualifying to her. 
And remember, when you're looking up at her, she's looking down at you. So this is one of the biggest drawbacks of being a provider, being an average provider. But like I said, man, you're not average. There's no fucking way you're average. So stick with me because I'm gonna show you the magic of being the provider. Everything has levels. You have low quality provider, middle average quality and high quality provider. A sexy man can be a provider. A really good looking Chad, Tyrone, whatever you wanna call it, Pookie, Ray Ray, can be an amazing provider, which makes him a double threat. Because like I said, not only has he practiced looks maxing, he's looks maxing, he's attractive, he's taking care of himself, he has his money on point, He's also willing to invest in her, makes him a double threat. Let's talk about some of the advantages because to this point, it might seem like it's shitty, but it's not. The provider strategy works best for most men. By definition, most men are not viewed as sexy. They're just not. We're not. There's a very finite group of men who are viewed as sexy and yes you have to be her type of sexy but even if you asked her that guy is sexy you can ask most women and that sexiness is most women's type of sexy it's it's harder to explain it that way but there's just some men who are very sexy a perfect uh definite a perfect guy to think about is johnny depp some guy girls might think he's disgusting, but some women who like him think he's very sexy. There's a sexiness about him. So you have to understand that. Being a good provider doesn't require that level of smoothness. You get away, you can make some mistakes in this dynamic because she's not holding you to a higher standard that she would that sexual provider or that lover role would. Most men tend to be happier being the provider. We're taught very young that you provide for your woman. It's in our nature to provide our money, our resources, our time. It's in our nature. So we feel happier, more whole, more complete being the provider. It also allows men who can get higher quality women who they otherwise might not have access to because of their looks. So if everything else is on point and they're making great money, have a great career, have everything else on point, but they're not the best looking guy, he has more access to the better looking woman because of all of those. Because women don't inherently look at men just on physical appearance like men look at women. Most men actually prefer being in a relationship. So this would mean that the lover role really doesn't optimize this strategy. So again, <clears throat> don't feel bad that you can't be in a lover role. What you want to do is combine these two roles. You want to look as best as you can. Does not mean you have to be a, a traditionally good looking man, but you need to enhance the things that you do have. Take good care of yourself, take good care of your skin, Get to the gym, dress well, eat well. We talk about this all the time. Be the best quality. You do everything you can to enhance what you do have on top of getting your money right, getting your social status right, and all of these. Once you do all of these and you can sort of blend these roles, now you have the most option for the for those the women you're looking for you're able to attract the woman who's probably better looking than you but you have more to offer her so your compensation package because you're not as good looking you get to offer maybe a better lifestyle for her you get to offer maybe going on vacations so you have to remember that it's not just about looks for women sometimes it is but most of the time, it's about being the best complete package that you can present to her as an offering in order for her to give you sex to get into a relationship where you're, it's a win-win really for both of you. She's getting what she wants. She's getting your time, your resources. She's getting your provisioning. You're getting sex. The biggest takeaway, guys, here is 
You want to become as high quality or as high value of a man as possible in all realms. The lower quality of a man you are, you're going to do shitty dependent. It won't matter what strategy you go with. The lover strategy ain't going to happen for you. The provider strategy, if you're a low quality provider, you're going to get low quality women. If you go the friend route, all you're going to do is get women throwing you in the friend zone. So you need to become the highest quality man you possibly can. This is why you're watching videos like this. And let's take it one step further, guys. In the description below, join our school program. It's $7 for the first 50 members to join. Inside this community, it is exclusive content only for my members. I have classes that you can take. I have videos that you can watch and inside those videos are going to be takeaways for you that I want you to implement. You're also going to have access to me via the text messaging and through comments specifically inside school. So this is going to be an exclusive membership for you and it's $7 a month for life for the first 50 people. So you'd be a fool to miss out on this because after the 50 people, we're gonna go up to 100 and keep going up from there. So this is the time right now to get in for a very low introductory price and get amazing content and get to work with me one-on-one -on -one or get closer to working with me one-on-one. -on -one. And again, this information is exclusive to school. It's not on YouTube. It's not on my websites. It's exclusive. So if you went out one in on this and you want to level yourself up more, you got to join that community. It's down below. Click the link down below. With that, that's all I have on this, guys. It's up to you to become the most high value man you can be. I'm here to help you in whatever capacity you'll allow me to. My name is Jared Schoonmaker. This is Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll talk soon.